Hi guys, I'm so excited to show you how to knit this fabulous pullover that's got this awesome v-neck collar. Um, all right, so you can knit this. So this is knit from the top down. We have a folded over collar and then you work the sweater as if it were a cardigan and then you join in the round and knit in the round to the bottom and then you knit the sleeves. So let's just go over a little bit of what you will need to knit the sweater. So I use this Cloudborn Fibers Highland Roving yarn and um, this is the color Stormy Skies. I use seven skeins of this and let's just look at the yardage here. One skein is 90 yards or 82.25 meters and it's five ounces, 150 grams and this is considered a super bulky weight yarn. Um, it is 100% wool. Um, I do think this yarn is being discontinued and so it is a little hard to find. There are other, some other great options. You can go on to yarnsub.com and figure out some other good um, options. Malabrigo Rasta would be a good option um, or you could use Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick yarn. I did knit this sweater on... Um, US 15 10 millimeter 40 inch knitting needles. So you will need a pair of those. And then you will need um, 10 millimeter, um, you'll need 10 millimeter 16 inch knitting needles for the sleeves. And then I went down to eight millimeter needles for the cuffs. So you don't have to do that. You can if you would like. You will need four stitch markers. You will need some scrap yarn to um, put the sleeves on and you will need a tapestry needle. You will need a tape measure and you will need a pair of scissors. So make sure you click the link in the video description to get a free PDF of the pattern that's on my website. When in doubt, just go to ashleylillis.com and view my knitting patterns and you can find um, the sweater there and download your free pattern PDF there. Once you enter your email in the pink box and you hit submit, the page will redirect to a PDF, either a Dropbox link or a Google Doc link, and you'll just have to download it from there. All right, so I use about seven skeins of this for my size. Um, like I said, I normally design on the fly. So I usually make around a size three for myself just for reference, but please reference the pattern for your specific size. There are sizes one through eight. So if you are knitting a size three, you will reference the third number in a list of numbers. So let's go ahead and get started with the pattern. All right, we are gonna start by casting on 44 stitches. So make sure you have a long enough tail to cast on 42 stitches. All right, you're gonna start by making a slip knot and put the slip knot on your needle. And I am using a US 15 10 millimeter 40 inch needle. We are gonna go back and forth um, on the first part of this pullover. So you don't need to use a short needle, you can use a long needle. All right, so cast on 44 stitches. This first slip knot counts as the first stitch. And so we are going to cast on the rest of the stitches using the long tail cast on method. So you'll grab the yarn, go under the yarn around your thumb, over the yarn around your index finger and pull through. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I will meet you back here when I've got 44 stitches casted on. All right, so I've got 44 stitches cast on. That is the number of stitches, the size I'm making calls for to cast on. So just make sure you cast on the appropriate amount for your size. And now we're simply going to turn the work. And um, when we cast on the long tail cast on method, I like to use this as the right side of the work. So we're gonna flip it and work the wrong side of the work. And on the wrong side, we are going to purl a row. So we're gonna do stockinette stitch here for eight inches. And this is for the collar. We're doing a folded over collar. 
um, and the collar will be four inches tall but if we're going to fold it over it needs to be eight inches before we fold it if you would like to change the length of the collar if you would like it to only be six um, three inches tall you can just complete stack on that stitch for six inches so just complete it for double the length that you would like the collar to be I like a really big thick tall collar so I am going to knit until my work reaches eight inches long so we will purl like I'm doing right now on the wrong side of the work and then when we flip the work you will do um, you'll knit the row so I'm gonna do a purl row here and then when I get to the end I'm going to turn the work and do a knit row I'm nearing the end of my first purl row and now I'm going to turn the work and start a knit row on the right side so I am simply going to just start knitting all the way across so you will continue doing a knit stitch on the right side of the work this is the right side of the work and a purl row on the wrong side of the work so I will meet you back here after I've completed close to eight inches from the cast on edge so you measure from the cast on edge to the length of your work so that's eight inches so it'll be about to here and then I will show you how to seam it's kind of you knit um, the top and the bottom of the work together to seam it for the fold over collar um, and you're gonna want to start the seam on the right side of the work um, so you'll need to end and be ready to seam after you've completed the wrong side of the work so I will meet you back here when we are ready to fold the collar over okay so I have just completed stack and nut stitch I know I originally said eight inches but as I was folding it over and testing it out um, I went closer to 10 inches um, so again a lot of you know I design on the fly so I do not have the pattern written so I was just playing with it and kind of folding it over to see how big the collar was looking and I've decided that I wanted to go closer to 10 inches in total um, and I'm going to show you now how to complete the fold over coll um, collar. So again, go as long as or as short as you want on the collar. I like a really overstated collar. So I am going closer to 10 inches here before I fold it over. So once you've completed the length that you want and you've um, ended after a wrong side row, you turn the work over and now you're on the right side row. So now what we are going to do is to connect the top and the bottom simply by going in the outside loop of each stitch as we go. So we are going to go into the first cast on stitch right here and I'm simply just going to insert my hook there I'm sorry insert my needle there in that very first outside loop and I'm just going to knit two together that's it that's all we're doing to seam it now you need to make sure your yarn is ready to roll so I'm going in that first outside loop and now we're just going from stitch to stitch so you um, I'll show you how to knit two together and then I'll show you more clearly how to get that outside loop so I'm just knitting two stitches together okay so that was the first one now I'm going to go into the next outside loop which is that one we are going in if you look you can see here it's it's this one here it's this one here it's this one here it's this one here so we just pick up the outside loop as we go and knit two together so 
I'm going to insert my needle into the next loop with that next stitch and we are knitting two stitches together. And it can be a little tricky, especially with the thicker yarn. And then you just keep going into that outside loop of that cast on edge. And you just knit the two stitches together. Outside loop, knit together. All right. And you want to make sure you're picking up the very next stitch and you're not skipping any stitches or else your stitches won't line up and then you won't have, um, it won't be even. Okay, so just continue along, inserting your needle in that outside loop and just knitting two stitches together to get this kind of seamless folded over collar look. All right, and then when we come back on the purl side, we're gonna set up our stitch markers for our raglan increases. So keep doing this all the way across. Okay, so I've gone all the way across. I'm on my last knit two together here. And so this will remain the right side and this is the wrong side. You can see that where we've connected the cast on edge and our working edge looks like this on the wrong side and looks like this on the right side. So we are going to do a raglan set up row here and I am going to get some stitch markers handy and we are going to do a raglan setup row on the wrong side of the work. So I've got four stitch markers. They can be any color. And for the size that I'm making, um, I am going to purl across eight stitches for the right front. This will be, we're going to do the right front, the right sleeve, the back, the left sleeve, and the left front. So on the wrong side, we set up, my dog actually got the end over here. Just, that's why it looks like that. All right, we're gonna purl across the right front. I'm gonna do six stitches for my size. Just reference what you need to do for your size. Five, six, Place a stitch marker and now I am going to go across oh whoops I'm sorry it's eight stitches not six eight stitches place a stitch marker and then we knit across six stitches for the right sleeve one two three four, five, six, place the next stitch marker. So this is the right, so this is the right front, the right sleeve. Now I am purling across the back for 16 stitches. One, two, Okay, 16 stitches for the back, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Place the stitch marker. Now I'm going to go across 6 stitches for the other sleeve. Two, four, five, six, And then the remaining stitches should be 8 stitches 
for the left front. And so the stitch markers just divide up the fronts, the sleeves, and the back, and we will be making increases on either side of those stitch markers so that the sweater grows to create the sleeves and the front and the back to the appropriate size, and then we will divide for the body, which means separating the sleeves out, and then we will just knit the body. I'm just gonna fix this because the yarn separated a little bit here. Okay, so now we are on the right side of the work and we are ready for our first raglan increase row. Okay, so to do our first raglan increase row, this will be our left front since when we wear it, it will sit on the front. And the front stitches are eight and eight in my case, which equals 16, and that is the same as the back stitches. So this is the left front, the left sleeve, the back, the right sleeve, and the right front. Okay, so now I will show you how to do one raglan increase row. And we always do the raglan increase row on the right side. So we are going to knit to two stitches before the first marker. So when we have two stitches before that first marker, we will stop. So that's two stitches before the first marker. Now we are going to make one that leans to the right. And you do that by inserting your needle from back to front and knitting to the front. So the stitch slants to the right. Then you knit two stitches, slip the marker, knit two stitches, and we're gonna make one that leans to the left by inserting our needle from front to back and knitting through the back. Then we knit to two stitches before the next stitch marker. Two stitches before the next stitch marker. We're gonna make one to the right by inserting the needle from the back to the front, knitting through the front. There. Knit two stitches, slip the marker, knit two stitches, Make one that leans to the left by inserting the needle from front to back, knitting through the back. And then we repeat that. You're gonna just knit all the way across the back here. And we increase eight stitches every raglan increase round. Two stitches on either side of the four stitch markers. Okay, so we knit all the way to two stitches before the next stitch marker. Gonna make one right, insert the needle from the back to the front, knit through the front, knit two stitches. We are going to slip the stitch marker, knit two stitches, make one that leans to the left by inserting the needle from front to back, knitting through the back, Keep repeating this. Two stitches before the next stitch marker, make one right. Slip the stitch marker, knit two stitches, and then we make one left. And then you just knit to the end. And then on every wrong side row, we will just be purling. So you simply just turn the work and purl all the way back, slipping the markers as you go. So you will be repeating that raglan increase row a certain number of times, whatever number your pattern says. So I will see you back here. So this is just purling all the way across and then you'll just keep repeating raglan increase row followed by a purl row. And I will touch base with you once I am done, uh, once I've done a few rows here to show you what it looks like. Um, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's time to divide for the body um, when we've reached our desired width for the raglan increases.
All right, I just wanted to show you what it's looking like after a few more rows. I've completed three raglan increase rows. One, two, three. And um, so then if I have started with six sleeve stitches, this is the left sleeve, and I've made three raglan increases, I have added six stitches to my sleeve because three times two is six, and I started with six, so two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Okay, so as you can tell, the sleeves are expanding, the back is expanding, the other sleeve is expanding, and then the front is expanding just on this side. So there you go. That's what it looks like after a couple of rows of raglan increases. Okay, so I have just started my 14th raglan increase row. Um, and we've been working this as if it were a cardigan, but because this is a v-neck or it's basically open and then connects, we're going to knit this round, but then we're going to join the work at the end of this row so that it becomes a pullover instead of a cardigan. So you just continue to do your raglan increases and I'm gonna continue working this all the way across the row. And then I'll show you what to do at the end. We're just gonna connect it by continuing to knit. So I will show you what that looks like. Um, so once I get to the end, I will show you how to connect it. And I did want to take a second to show you how you can tell what raglan increase row you're on. So you can tell that I've got an increase here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and I'm on my fourteenth. So I just wanted to show you how you can count. Um, how many increases you've done. And you can also count by checking your stitch count as well. So um, if you've started with 16 stitches on the back and you've made um, 13 raglan increase rows, you will have 16 plus 23, 23 because it's 13 stitches times two. Um, so it's 16 stitches plus 26 stitches should get your back stitches. So you can always count the stitches. All right, so I'm nearing the end of the 14th raglan increase row. You'll just follow the directions in the pattern. And I've finished the last stitch and all I'm going to do now is bring the work that's over here and push it up. So you can see this is our work now. And we're just going to connect the left front and the right front by just continuing to knit. All right. So now you've simply joined the work. It'll be a little loose here um, and then it'll get tighter as you get going. But you're going to do one more. This row, since we just did a raglan increase row, we're going to do one more knit row. And then I'm going to do one more raglan increase row round. We call it rounds now. And then we will um, divide the body and separate off the sleeves. So it can get tricky now to figure out where the um, beginning and end of the round is. So we're gonna just, you can place a stitch marker here if you'd like, um, but basically just keep track. So we just finished a raglan increase row, row. So now we're gonna just do a knit round and then one more raglan increase round after you've completed. So you'll start the increases right here on the left front once you come all the way back around. So this, this round is just a knit round, so just knit everything. And then when you get back to that left front, right before the stitch marker, you'll do your one last raglan increase, um, raglan increase round. So 
I will meet you back here once you've finished that raglan increase round and you will finish when you're right here at that center, okay? So again, knit around, do one more raglan increase round and then I will meet you back here when it's time to divide for the body, all right? So I'm um, nearing the end of that knit round after I connected the left and right fronts, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like to knit around um, this, and it's just, it'll be a little loose, but that's okay. We will seam this up at the end. Okay, so now I have finished the knit round, so I'm gonna do one more raglan increase round here and then we will divide for the body. So I'm going to knit to two stitches before the first stitch marker on that left front, and I will continue my raglan increases as I normally would if I was knitting this as a cardigan. So it's the same thing. And you just Continue to two stitches before that stitch marker. And you do the same, make one right. Make one left. Two stitches after you slip the marker. Okay, so you're gonna repeat that again all the way around and then I'll meet you back here when we're at this V point, or at the V neck again, um, because we're gonna start to divide for the body at that point, and we're gonna take off our sleeve stitches and connect the front and the back. So dividing for the body means you separate out the sleeve stitches and put them on a stitch, on a placeholder we're just going to use a piece of waste yarn and then we'll just knit in the round with the front and back with the sleeves off. Okay, so I will see you back here um, after I have finished this raglan increase round and it's time to divide for the body. So I will continue the raglan increases all the way around and meet you here. Okay, so I am nearing the end of my last raglan increase round and now I am ready to divide for the body. And before we divide for the body, I just wanna take a second to have you check your stitch count. And I get a lot of questions on people, they get to this point and they have their stitch count off by one or two stitches, like maybe one sleeve is one stitch longer than the other sleeve. And they ask me, do I need to undo the whole sweater and fix my stitch count? Well, I don't think you do. I am not the world's most perfect knitter. Um, let me just get to the point here. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're on your left front and now you're just going to knit to the first stitch marker and then we will remove the sleeve stitches. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that and talk to you guys about um, how to fix stitches. So if you are off by a stitch or so on one of the fronts or the backs or the sleeves, um, you can always just kind of fudge it a little bit. You now, if you're off by like four stitches, four or five stitches on one sleeve, um, you know, you might want to go back and figure out really where you made the mistake. But um, if you have one sleeve that is like one stitch bigger than the other, or you're missing one stitch on a left front, just add it. Just do a make one right and um, add another stitch to make it equal. Um, you know, you can always add one more stitch at the underarm on the sleeves if you're off. Um, you can get creative with where you add a stitch, um, or you could even decrease a stitch if you wanted. If you, if you had too many stitches for whatever reason, you could do a knit two together or a slip slip knit um, somewhere if you need to reduce stitches. So I am more pro Hey, just kind of fudge it, especially if this is your first sweater. It can be really frustrating to figure out where you made this mistake and rip everything back out. So 
um, you know, if you are on the left front here and you're checking your stitches and you're off, you know, do another little make one right right over here and make it this um, to get it even. So I started out with 16 stitches on my back and six stitches for either sleeve and eight stitches for the left and right fronts. I have now um, 46 stitches on the back. Um, and so I know that's correct because I've done 15 raglan increase rows. So I'm adding 30 stitches. 15 times two is 30. So I've added 30 stitches along the back. And I have, um, if I started out with eight stitches for the front and we've done 15 stitches, it's eight plus 15, which would be 23 stitches for each left and right front. And then if we had six stitches on each sleeve, six plus 30 is 36 stitches for each sleeve. So if you're looking at this again, this is the left front, the right front, the left sleeve, the right sleeve, and the back. So we are gonna work our way around now. And once we get to our first sleeve, our left sleeve, we are going to knit to this marker. We are going to remove the sleeve stitches by placing them on a piece of waist yarn. So you're gonna to wanna to have your waist yarn and your tapestry needle handy here. And then we are going to knit the back stitches. And once we get to the right sleeve, we're going to place all of these right sleeve stitches on a piece of waist yarn and then knit the front. We are going to change where the beginning of round starts and ends. This will not be the beginning of round. We're gonna have our beginning of round start at our left, at the middle of the left underarm cast on. Um, you don't wanna end the work right in the front center. So um, let's get going with our dividing of the body here. So like I said, you can knit all the way to that first stitch marker, which will be at the beginning of the left sleeve. And once we get to the left sleeve, we are going to remove this stitch marker, okay? We are going to take our tapestry needle and our piece of waist yarn. The waist yarn, I usually make my waist yarn like twice as long as my sleeve stitches. You just wanna make sure you have enough yarn so that when those sleeve stitches are kind of stretched out, they sit comfortably on that piece of waist yarn. So basically, you just take your needle and remove all of these stitches, all of these sleeve stitches. And these sleeve stitches will be um, the stitches that go all the way to that next stitch marker. And you just slide them off in the direction um, that they are on the needle. So if I was knitting, this would be, I'm slipping, slipping them off purl-wise. I'm not slipping them off like this. I'm slipping them off this way. I find this is just easier to put them back on the needle when they're this way. Okay, so once you get to the end of that left sleeve, you take off this stitch marker now, and we pull that waist yarn through, and then you can pull off the tapestry needle and just kind of make sure those stitches are situated nicely on that piece of waist yarn. So we used to have one big loop, now we've removed this, the sleeve stitches, so you can just kind of fold that work forward here and now you just connect that left front to the back by knitting, but we usually cast on a certain number of stitches at the underarm. I'm casting on four stitches, and again, 
I design on the fly. So reference your pattern based on the size that you're making. Everybody always asks me, what size are you making? I usually knit around a size three, but when I go back and do the numbers and design the pattern, things might be a little different. So um, just reference the pattern and what size you're making to figure out how many stitches you feel like you need to cast on. If you, or you need to cast on, if you feel like you need more or less stitches, here's the time to get a little creative. You can calculate what your bust will be by doing a ratio between your gauge and um, the amount of stitches you have on your needle for your bust circumference. So that will be the back stitches, the left and right front stitches, plus the underarm cast on stitches for both the left sleeve and the right sleeve. That will be your new stitch count for the bust. So if your gauge is 10 stitches for four inches, you can just do a ratio 10 over four equals whatever your total cast on stitches are or your bust stitches are over X. And when you solve for X, that will give you your circumference. So um, I will have, I'm gonna cast on um, four stitches here. One, two, using the backwards loop method, but when I'm halfway with, um, between those cast on stitches, I'm going to put a new beginning of round marker. And then I'm gonna cast on two more stitches. One, two, okay? So I've cast on four stitches at the underarm. So um, like I said, um, my ratio is 10 stitches to four inches, and I will have 100 stitches um, so if I were to do a ratio to figure out what my new bust circumference is going um, on this method here, um, I would just do 100 times 4 divided by 10. And that's 40 inches. That's a 40 inch bust there. Okay. Okay, so once you've cast on those stitches, the number of stitches, and you've placed your stitch marker in the middle, you simply just join by continuing to knit. Some people, there's different ways you can join the front to back. I find that's the simplest way. You can get some gaps at the underarm, but I just like to go back with my tapestry needle at the end and seam that up. So now we've connected the left front to the back. Our sleeve stitches are on the waist yarn. Now I'm simply just knitting across the back. So I'm knitting across the back stitches here. And I'll show you what to do once we get to the end of these back stitches. Okay, so I've almost finished knitting those back stitches. Once I've hit the marker, I'm done knitting the back. So I'm going to remove this stitch marker, place it to the side. I'm gonna get my tapestry needle ready with my waist yarn. And now we're simply going to move the right sleeve stitches onto a piece of waist yarn, the same way we did before. You can slip them purlwise onto the stitch marker. And go all the way over to the next stitch marker. All right, so once you get to the end of the sleeve, sleeve stitches, you can remove that stitch marker um, and you're gonna want to pull the waist yarn through again and get those sleeve stitches spread out evenly on the piece of waist yarn. We're gonna do the same thing where we connect the back and the front by pushing the sleeve forward here. And now we're gonna cast on our underarm cast on stitches. And um, you don't need to place a marker at the middle. You can if you want. It's just important to denote the beginning or end of round. Sometimes people put stitch markers on both sides if there are increases, if there are, is more shaping you wanna do. So feel free to um, put stitch markers on there if you would like. You don't have to, I'm not. I'm just gonna cast on my four stitches using the backwards loop cast on method. You can use a knitted cast on method, anything you like, and then you simply just keep knitting across here to um, the beginning of round. So basically, 
Um, we've got our beginning of round marker and now you're just going to knit in the round and stock a next stitch um, for the body length that you desire before the ribbing. So I'm going to just keep knitting and I want to show you um, how to knit those cast on stitches. So I'll meet you back here once I get to that beginning of round marker because I just want to show you what it looks like to knit those cast on stitches. Okay, so I'm almost to my beginning of round, but I wanted to show you what it looks like when you knit those cast on stitches for the first time. So that was the last stitch. So you just have to be careful. Um, if you use the backwards loop method, it can be a little tricky to knit into that backwards loop and it will look kind of stretched out and big. Um, and that's normal. Um, it, it tends to tighten up a little bit as you get going, um, but you might have a little bit of a gap at the underarm, like I said, and we can go back and seam that up with our tapestry needle at the end, but this is what it looks like. So you just go slowly and make sure you go into that loop the right direction, and you will have gaps like this, um, but you just keep knitting normally. Like I said, we'll just go back and fix those gaps. So I will meet you back here once I've reached the length um, that I want for my body before our ribbing. So you, like I said, you just keep knitting in the round um, and you just keep slipping that stitch marker and knitting all the way across your round. All right, so I am nearing the point where I am done knitting stockinette stitch for the body. And I'm going to start my two by two rib. And just for reference for length here, um, I'm just gonna slip this here. Um, I am making this a bit cropped. It's not really cropped, but um, you know, feel free to make this as long or short as you would like from the underarm. I'm at about nine inches from the underarm. I'm going to do probably three to four inches of ribbing. I'm going to see what it looks like as I go. But to start the two by two rib, um, you will knit two and purl two. All right, so you knit two stitches and then you purl two stitches. And this is called a two by two rib. A one by one rib is knit one, purl one. So we are knitting two, purling two. And like I said, I'm gonna continue this on for about three to four inches. You can make the ribbing as long or as short as you would like. So um, you wanna make sure though that you have a number of stitches for the body here that's divisible by four. So you end on two purl stitches. So just continue around. And then when you get to the beginning of round, you'll just continue knitting the knit stitches and purling the purl stitches. I also wanna show you how to join yarn. So I'm just starting the two by two rib, but I am nearing the end of a skein here. Um, so I just wanted to show you how I like to join yarn. You're gonna to wanna to um, have enough room to knit like three or four stitches with the tail plus some left over, you're going to take the new skein and join it like this, leaving a little bit of a tail as well. And then you're just gonna work the yarn double for a couple of stitches. I like to do four stitches. So I'm treating the two strands as if they were one strand. So I'm knitting two and purling two with the two with the yarn held double. And then I drop my old yarn and just continue knitting with my new yarn. Um, and then when you go back around and you get to that double strand here, this will be a double strand. You just knit this as if it were one stitch. Okay. All right. I'm nearing the end of my first round of my two by two rib. Got two purl stitches left. So I just wanted to show you how to Slip the marker and then you just continue. Knit two, purl two. Knit two, purl two. 
So I will see you back here when I'm ready to bind off. I will probably complete about 12 rounds or close to between three and four um, inches. Again, you can bind off at whatever length you'd like, but I'll see you back here in a little bit. Okay, so I've completed the ribbing for about three inches. That's what I decided to do. And it's about 11 rounds for me. It might be different for you. Um, so just go by length instead of number of rounds. I like to specify that normally anyway in knitting. So I've completed three inches of the two by two rib and now it's time to bind off. And I like to demonstrate a pretty simple bind off. There are many different ways to bind off. Um, this is kind of just a basic bind off and a lot of people's criticism of this bind off is that it's tight. So there are different ways to bind off. There's the Italian bind off and then there's the super stretchy bind off. But I'm just going to show you a basic bind off. And when we do the basic bind off, you start knitting in pattern for two stitches. So that's knit two. And then once you've knit two stitches, you slip that first stitch over the second stitch and you drop it. Okay, and when you do this, I like to keep this kind of loose. You don't want to do this too tight. So my next stitch is a purl stitch. So I do the purl stitch and I just continue to slip that first stitch over the stitch I've just knit, trying to keep it somewhat loose. The goal is just to keep the gauge consistent. So I'm going to do another purl stitch since that's what's in the pattern. So I'm continuing the knit to purl to which is called knitting in pattern, but I'm just slipping that stitch over every single time I knit. So you should never have more than two stitches on the needle at a time, and you're gonna always end up with just one stitch um, on the right hand needle as you go here. Okay, so you just knit in pattern and continue slipping that yarn over Again, there's many different ways to bind off. This is just a simple bind off that I like to show and demonstrate for beginner knitters. And honestly, I, I still do this for most of my bind offs because I, I figured out how to keep this um, pretty loose. And I just really like the way this looks. I just like the finished look of it. So when you continue to do this in pattern, I think it turns out looking pretty nicely. Okay, so you're gonna continue doing this all the way around and I'll show you what to do when you get towards the end. Okay, so I'm nearing the end of the bind off here. I've bound off all the way around. I've got a few stitches left, so I'm gonna continue in pattern, and then I've got one more purl stitch. So you complete the last stitch, you lift over that last stitch, and you've got one left, and then all you're gonna do is snip the yarn, leaving a little bit of a tail here, and you're just going to lift the yarn through and pull, and then we will take our tapestry needle at the end and connect this, this last stitch to the first stitch here and weave in our ends, okay? So I usually just do all of that at the end. So now we are done with the bottom ribbing. And it's time to knit the sleeves. All right, now it's time to knit the sleeves. We have finished the body. We still have our left and right sleeve stitches on our waist yarn here. So I'm gonna show you how to pick up these stitches from the waist yarn and then add the stitches for the underarm cast on as well. So we'll be picking up all of these stitches first on our 16 inch 10 millimeter um, knitting needles and all you're gonna do is slip these stitches back onto the yarn and you can pull the waist yarn as you go or you can kind of wait to the end and pull it all off but this is how you get the stitches back onto the needles and if you start with this way um, with the right hand needle going towards the left, just make sure you put the needle on the stitches in this direction. So when you knit, you're knitting in the correct direction. 
So just continue working all the way around, getting these stitches back onto the needle. And once you've got these on, this is also a good time to, you know, if you do need to fudge a little bit of the sleeve stitch count for some reason, if you're off, you could pick up another stitch or decrease a stitch at this point too, if you wanted, if you've done all this work and you're like, shoot, I've messed up the sleeve stitch count. This is your chance at this point to um, add or subtract a stitch or two. Okay, so I and make sure this last one, it can be tight because it's at the end here. Just really make sure you get that last stitch on. Check your stitch count. I'm gonna pull my waist yarn through here. So all of our stitches are on the needle now. We need to start picking up the stitches. Make sure you've got a stitch marker handy. Yep, I've got my stitch marker. Okay, so you're gonna take your yarn and it doesn't matter if you start with the left or right sleeve. I started with the left sleeve here. You're going to start picking up these four stitches on the right side of, of over here. Don't start over here, start over here at the beginning. And you are going to simply insert your needle See, if you can tell, if you do a backwards loop cast on, you're gonna have these like little bumps here and you're going to want to, I cast on four stitches, so we'll need to pick up four stitches. So just pick up as many stitches as you cast on at the underarm. So that's one stitch, two stitch, three stitch, four stitch. And we're gonna be inserting our needle into that, you know what? There, that's not the right one, here we go. One. We're gonna insert the needle there into those two bars. Two, three, four, okay? Those are where I'm gonna insert my needle. If you need to pick up a stitch or two, you can just add a stitch like at the beginning or the end if you need to. But all you do is take your strand of yarn, insert your needle, and go up and pull through. And when you wrap the yarn around the needle going bottom to top here, it gets the stitch facing the same direction. So, and then you can kind of hold this tail to make sure it stays taut there. So you insert your needle into the next stitch and then you go up and pull through. It can be a little hard. Okay, so there's our second stitch. I'm gonna place a stitch marker in the middle of those two, of those four cast on stitches to denote the beginning and end of round. So now I'm gonna pick up my third stitch, go up, pull through, the last stitch here, go up and pull through. Now there's lots of different ways, different techniques that people use to um, avoid gaps at the underarm when you're picking up sleeve stitches for raglans here. I simply just start knitting because I like to just go back. So to connect these sides, we're just gonna knit. Just continue to knit and you will get a little bit of a gap and that's okay. Um, we have to weave in ends at the underarm anyway, so I usually just take those ends and seam up the gaps. Um, again, there's lots of different techniques that people use to um, avoid those gaps at the underarm as simple as possible for you guys. Some people pick up extra stitches and then decrease them. Um, but so you just continue knitting. So you can, now you're gonna knit all the way around and you've got your beginning of round marker. So we're gonna continue stocking that stitch, which is just knitting each round. All right, I'm nearing the end of my first sleeve round here and I just wanna show you, it's good to kinda just hold on to that tail. Um, and as we come around to the beginning of the round, again, you just continue knitting, but it can get a little bit wonky. There's the separation between the, the last stitch and then the stitch I cast on. So it might look a little big, but you can just keep pulling that yarn. And again, we'll come back and seam that up. So you just continue slipping the marker and knitting. And 
And there's what it's looking like again. You, you, I've got a little bit of a gap there, but we'll fix that later. Okay, so I have knit um, just under an inch and a half. So now I'm going to do a decrease, a sleeve decrease round, and we're going to be doing decreases every inch and a half or so for the stated number of increases your pattern size says. So when it's a decrease round, you knit one, and then you're going to knit two stitches together. Okay. And then you're going to knit all the way around until you have three stitches left. So we're decreasing at the beginning of the round, at the end of the round. So when we do a decrease round, you're decreasing two stitches. And this just allows for a gradual decrease so that your sleeve cuff is a little tighter um, than it is at the beginning of the sleeve at the top. Now, um, if you don't like the gradual decrease look, you can just knit straight with no decreases and then just decrease a lot for the cuff. But I'm just showing you how I design the sweater. I do like a lot of my sweaters to have gradual decreases instead of big puffy, you know, more puffier sleeves and then a decrease. But it just depends what look you're going for. Um, so I'm working my way around here. And then I'll show you how to do the other decrease once we get to the point where we have three stitches left. Okay, so I've got three stitches left and now we're going to do a slip slip knit and then a knit one. So basically, we've created a decrease that leans this way at the beginning of the round and a decrease that leans this way at the beginning of the round. So that's why we do a slip slip knit at the end and a knit two together at the beginning because that's just the way the stitch leans. So when they're kind of leaning in towards each other, it uh, can look a little bit better. So you're going to be repeating the decrease every inch and a half or so. Um, for me, that's like every five rounds ish um, and just go based on measurement instead of number of rounds because everyone's gauge is a little bit different. Um, don't worry if it's not exact. You can knit to the length that you want your sleeve to be. You can try it on and you can always make your cuff longer or shorter. You can always just continue stock a net stitch before you begin the, cu um, the cuff if you would like. So I will meet you back here when I've done um, some more increases and I, I'm sorry, some more decreases and I am ready to knit the cuff. All right, so I'm at the point where now I am going to um, start the cuff on my sleeve. I have done all of my decreases every inch and a half or so. And now I'm going to start the cuff. I like to make my cuffs... Um, a little more snug. So I'm going to switch to an eight millimeter needle. I'm knitting with a 10 millimeter, 16 inch. Um, and I'm going to go down two needle sizes. You don't have to go down any needle sizes. You could go down to a nine millimeter. You could stay on the 10 millimeter. I am just going to make mine pretty tight. So I'm going to go down a needle size by knitting one round with the new needle. So I'm going to knit, um, and you know what, I'm gonna take the stitch marker off and then when I get to the end, I'll put it back on. But So I'm gonna just knit one round, knit off the larger needle onto the smaller needle, and then um, we're gonna do the two by two rib for three inches and bind off again. So, um, you know, you can try this sweater on, you can reference the pattern and see how long um, it says to make it. Um, before you do the cuff, but what's great is that you can try the sweater on and see how the sleeve is fitting you. Everybody's arm length is different. Everybody likes their sweater to hit their wrist or their arm at a different point. You could make this cropped, you could make it very long and roll the sleeve up. There's lots of different options. But right now I'm just showing you how to switch needle size and I like to switch the needle size by knitting around and 
knitting the um, stitches off the old needle onto the new needle by doing this. So I'm at the end here. You want to make sure your stitch count is divisible by four because we're going to be doing a two by two rib in the round. And when you do a two by two rib in the round, you need your work to be divisible by four. So you end on a purl two and start with a knit two. So here we go. We're going to do our knit two, purl two, all the way around again, just like we did with the body ribbing. I did not switch the work on the body ribbing to smaller needles. Um, I don't like, I didn't want the bottom to gather in a lot. So that's why I didn't switch it. If you would like to switch it on the body, feel free. Um, the stitch count might be a little tight here on 16 millimeter needles. It's pulling a little bit. If you want to use DPNs, double pointed needles, feel free. It should still work fine with 16 inch needles. So I'm going to continue this for three inches and then bind off the same way I did for the body ribbing. And then you'll just repeat the same thing for the other sleeve, picking up the same number of stitches at the underarm and um, knitting the sleeve and the decreases the same way as you did on the first sleeve. So as you can see, I'm nearing the end here and I've got um, a number divisible by four on my sleeve count. So I'm ending with a purl two and I will just slip the, the stitch marker and continue the two by two rib. Um, until I get to my three inches. I don't know. I'm going to try it on and see where it hits. I might go to four inches depending on um, where it's sitting on me. I think I want this sleeve to be pretty long and tight against the wrist. Um, I did want to take a second to show you how to knit the magic loop method. Um, if you don't have double pointed needles or 16 inch circular needles, you can use a um, 32 or 40 inch longer circular needle to knit um, using the magic loop method. So all you're going to want to do is fold the work in half and pull out the um, tail here. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can just split them in half here. Um, I'm going to remember that this is my beginning of round over here and what you're going to want to do is shift all the stitches to um, kind of the front of the needles. Make sure your yarn is on the first stitch of the back needle and then you're going to pull this through a little bit and then work with this needle across half of the work here and I'm going to do my knit two purl two, two by two rib here. So once I get to the end, knit two, and I didn't divide it evenly. I have a one purl stitch here, so I need to remember to start with one purl stitch on the other side. So what do I what I like to do at this point is set up my needles for the other side by pushing all the stitches back on over here and then I turn the work and then now I will pull this through over here and now I'm going to purl one and I get the yarn in the right place here and I'm going to purl one and continue that that rib knit two Purl two. So that's how you do the magic loop. You just work across half of the work and then kind of just switch the placement of the needle and then work across the second half. And then you're just going to bind off the same way that you bind off um, what you did with the body. So um, once you've knit to show you what this side is looking like here. This is about three inches here. Once you knit to about three inches, you're going to want to bind off just as you did for the body. Right, now we're going to do the applied eye cord across the V-neck here. You're going to want to grab your eight millimeter, 16 inch needles that you used for the cuff. And what we're going to do is insert our needle um, 
you know, about a stitch, stitch down from the top at the folded over top, we're going to go through the front and the back of the work here. Okay. Um, that's how we work across the folded over collar. So first, the first thing we want to do is, um, we are going to cast on three stitches. One, two, three. And this is called an applied I cord because we're applying this I cord as we go. So now we're going to insert our needle about one stitch down from the top here because we're going to seam in that top part. And then you're going to pick up and knit a stitch through both of those. It's a little thick, it's a little awkward, but you'll get the hang of it. Okay, you're going to slip the stitches over to the other side. Now you're going to knit two. And then you're going to knit these two stitches together. Okay. Easier said than done. But just do your best here. Okay. We're now we're going to pick up and knit the next stitch through the both the front and the back of that folded over collar. We're going to go through the front and the back. We're going to pick up and knit, slide the work. You can use double pointed needles too. I like the circular needle because then you don't, the stitches don't drop off. And then you're going to do a knit two, one, two, and then knit these two stitches together through the back loop here. Okay. Now we're going to skip a stitch because we're going to do three stitches for every four rows. So we're going to skip the stitch, go in the next stitch, skip the stitch on the back, go in the next stitch, pick up and knit a stitch, slide the work. Then we do a knit two. knit two together through the back loop. Okay, show you one more time here. So this is our first stitch because we've done three. So it's like one, two, skip a stitch three, one, two, skip a stitch three. That's how you do three stitches for every four rows. And you can see this is starting to come together here. I'll do a few more times so you can see, and then I'll just show you what to do when you get to the bottom of the V-neck. So you knit two, knit two through the back loop, pick up the next stitch, pick up and knit the next stitch, slide the work, Knit two, knit two together. All right, so you're going to continue this applied I cord. See how cool it starts to look along the edge here? You're going to continue this all the way up to the other side. So I'll touch base with you once I get down to the V neck because you're going to want to skip over and connect the side. So I'll show you how to do that. So I'll see you back in a little bit once I'm nearing the end of the v-neck or nearing the v-neck here. All right, just wanted to show you what it's looking like. I finished doing the applied eye cord on the double collar portion and now I'm just on the left front of the work and you just continue doing the same thing but now you're just going through one stitch and picking up and knitting that. So I just wanted to make note of that, but you're still continuing to do the same thing even though you're only going through um, one stitch when you pick up and knit. All right, and when you're nearing the end of the v-neck, don't basically just kind of figured you're going to want to leave a little bit of space. You don't, I'm kind of at the point where there's no, um, 
I'm at the divide. So I'm just gonna work across. You don't wanna work like really far into this cause then it, it makes the work really stick out. So leave a little space. You can see that um, this is really the first row on the other side. So now you can just pick up the work from the other side and continue working. Um, and then we can just turn the work and start working up that right front. So I'm going to turn the work now. I just did that first stitch. I'm gonna turn the work and now I'm going to work up this whole side. So I'll see you um, when I'm at the end. You're going to work through the double color the same way you did on the other side. You're just going to be coming at it from this direction. So we've done this whole part. Um, I've turned at the v-neck and now we're going to go up the other side. And so I'll show you what to do once you get to the end up here. Okay, I am nearing the end here. I just picked up a stitch. I'll probably pick up one more stitch. One thing I wanted to say is don't work all the way to the very top with the applied eye cord because you're going to have to bind off a few stitches and you're going to want to kind of weave those in. So you want to leave yourself a little bit of room here. So I'm going to go into my very last stitch here and work this and then now I am going to work this one as if it were normal here, knit two together, and then now I'm just going to tr slide the work back over without picking up a stitch, and then we're just going to bind these stitches off normally. So knit two, slip this stitch over knit this stitch and bind that off and then we can just weave this in over here okay so now cut the yarn here and just pull this through by going like this and then we're just going to weave, we're going to take us um, a tapestry needle and just weave this in to the inside of that folded over collar and you won't even know it was there. Just kind of weave it in and pull it through and cut the work. And then you can just kind of pull it in. And there you go. Now you've finished the applied right, eye. So I am finished knitting the sweater and all I have left to do is weave in the ends. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like and how to do that. So first thing, um, on the ribbing, you're going to want to, um, on your cuff ribbing and then your body ribbing, you're going to want to connect the, um, the beginning and the end of the round by seaming the work together and then weaving in your end. So to do that, you can just kind of slide your needle together through the beginning of the round and then kind of go back through here and pull, um, not tightly, but just make the work um, connect. And then all I do to weave in my ends is just go up one leg of the stitch all the way up. And be careful, when you use single ply 100% wool, it can rip. So just be careful when you pull the yarn through. So I am just going to gently Pull this up and I'm just going to stretch it out a little bit. I might continue up um, to the top of the ribbing here. And then I'm just going to 
trim end off here. And so we've done the ribbing. So do the same thing for each sleeve cuff where you connect the beginning and the end of the round and then you weave it in. And then to do, you know, we've cast it on um, stitches and did that applied eye cord. So all I would suggest doing for this guy is to just kind of weave the end back into the work. And then I'm honestly just going to go like this, weave the end, weave it all back into the work, kind of pull it through here. I'm going to have it come out the back so I can just cut it, but then it can just kind of live inside that folded over collar. So I'm going to snip it kind of short here. And then I'm just going to kind of pull it back in. So then now that's gone. So you can't see that. And then um, you can weave in your other ends, but I did just want to show you how to seam armhole gaps, which you might want to do. And you can turn the work kind of inside out. That one's a little short, so I'm not going to show you that one right now. Um, let's check this side. Okay. This is a good side. So you see I have kind of two gaps. Um, I'm going to fix, show you how to fix one. You can do the same thing with the other side. Um, so you can use a tail you already have or you can just attach a piece of scrap yarn. So I'm just, you know, there's no exact science to this really. People do this all differently. I'm just going to go around the legs of the stitches kind of around that gap. And I'm going to just pull it together, kind of go back through where I was originally. I'm going to try to make this work across. So I can get to the other gap here and close it up, but I might be a little short here. Let's see. I'm just going to go through those legs again, around, and close it up. And then I'm just kind of going to follow a stitch and weave the work back through. It's a little short, so you can just use another piece of yarn if you need to. And I'm just going to go back through and follow a stitch around. And just pull it and then I will probably just trim that end there. Okay, so you can go back through and finish seaming in the ends like that. And you will be complete with your sweater. Let me just show you what it's looking like now at the end. Sleeves finished in this great color.